Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining my session today. So my name is Mohamed Wali. I do work as a solutions architect for AWS Solutions Architecture team, mainly based out of Amsterdam, the Netherlands, acting as a technical advisor for large enterprises and retail customers within Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, helping them in their journey to the cloud, uh, making sure that it's seamless and secure. So over the past 16 years, PowerShell has been heavily used by technical professionals, which are developers and IT pros. And that was quite useful mainly because pretty much everybody wanted to avoid repetitive tasks, managing things via click and point method. Um, and that's why it made total sense to use an automation tool such as PowerShell. That's why at AWS, 10 years ago, we launched the AWS tools for PowerShell, which was mainly meant to enable PowerShell developers and Windows users to play around with AWS services and resources, create, operate, and manage AWS services. Over the time, a huge investment has been put into that to make sure that it pretty much supports all of our services and resources, and we keep to grow and thrive over there. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how you can run PowerShell on Lambda, so you can get best of the post worlds, you can bring your own skills, the PowerShell skills, run it on a native AWS serverless service such as AWS Lambda. But before getting started, I'm quite curious to know if any of you is already familiar with AWS or running uh, AWS workloads. Oh, that's pretty much 90%, that's good, good to see. So by any chance, did you use AWS, PowerShell to AWS tools for PowerShell before? Please keep raising your hand if you have run it in Lambda. So we are getting to 20%, or oh, all right, that's good to see. So, what we're gonna talk about today is mainly an easier way to run your PowerShell script on top of AWS Lambda. I think it's safe to assume that pretty much everybody is familiar with PowerShell, yet I think it's no shame to do a quick refresher just to make sure that we are on the same page. I'm a PowerShell fan myself, that's why uh, I would like to just do a quick recap. Initially released in 2006, late 2006, as, and used to be called Windows PowerShell. All the time that has been changed in 2016 when PowerShell Core was launched, which actually, you know, went really beyond the walls of Windows to do support other platforms such as macOS and Linux. It's quite known in the community that it's a scripting language. I personally don't prefer to call it that. It's more of a programming language, but for operators, because it's really, really strong from this perspective. It's simply an open source shell built on top of Microsoft technology, mainly meant to help you craft rich automation scripts and uh, configuration tools and frameworks. One of the common use cases or patterns I personally used to experience while working with PowerShell was the fact that PowerShell loves to react to events, either scheduled or logged one. And that's why it totally makes sense that if you're working with AWS, you'd find the need to run your PowerShell scripts on top of Lambda. I've been talking about Lambda multiple times so far, but why Lambda? What is it, what is it really? So AWS Lambda is simply a compute service that runs on AWS that lets you run your code without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure by any means. So some of the benefits that comes with AWS Lambda is, of course, the fact that you don't really have to worry about provisioning servers or infrastructure. That part is totally managed for you. Uh, it scales automatically. You don't have to create your auto scaling configuration, worry about it and manage it on the long run. Uh, it can be invoked in different ways, either by invoking the function directly or by uh, responding to certain events. And what's really cool about it is the fact that you only pay for the time you consume. So if you have a server currently that you're using to run partial scripts a few times per day or multiple times per day, and having the server up and running all the day, you're paying a lot of money uh, against if you're using on the other side AWS Lambda, that's gonna save you a lot of money if you're running your partial scripts on top of that because you only pay for the compute time uh, needed to execute your partial script. So, the utilization patterns over the time has changed. And starting off with the traditional on-premises data centers, we used to go ahead, pay pretty much all the money upfront to get our data center gears to meet uh, our highest demand or the peak of our demand, which is not necessarily something we used to meet all the time. And that really resulted in a lot of resources or a lot of servers not properly utilized 
on the other side, if we had a spike, which maybe even goes beyond what we are uh, planning for, it's quite hard to really re react to that immediately or in a short time because mainly we'd have to go through a long procurement process to get a new physical server or even to spin up a new version machine in order to satisfy your needs. That has been drastically changed by moving to the cloud. And the instance-based model, as you see here, the second one, has changed it drastically. So in, in, in AWS Cloud Platform, we call the EC2 instance. This is a virtual machine flavor of uh, AWS services. So as you see over here, it's actually almost nearly probably utilized because now you're only provisioning the servers. You only need to meet your requirements. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to meet your requirements all the time. And sometimes it's going to be less uh, or underutilized, or in case it meets a spike, it's going to be overutilized. Of course, you still can create your auto scaling groups to meet the spikes, but still can take some time to spin up a new instance and take some time to install and configure your servers and applications on top of that. And by moving to the left side, as you see here, the serverless utilization patterns is, seems to be the best one over here, mainly because uh, you really don't have to worry about uh, managing the servers from one perspective, and you only can create a resource or a service that would react to what you really need. So if you need to run a script multiple times per day, you really don't need to spin up a server all the day long and pay for it. That's why it sounds to be the most efficient one out of the street. So far, we have been just doing a quick intro about Lambda, about PowerShell, about the different utilization patterns, and why really Lambda could be a potential fit here. So let's dive deep into the meat of the purpose of our session today, which is PowerShell runtime for Lambda. And I really would like to get started by talking about the existing .NET solution, or the very first solution we launched in order to support running your PowerShell scripts on top of Lambda. So back in 2018, we did start to support PowerShell Core 6.0 to run on .NET Core 2.1 runtime. So this was mainly an initiative from our side, mainly to empower the PowerShell developers to play around with AWS resources and craft rich automation scripts so they can use their own skills without having to learn something new. What this solution did in a nutshell was, it was you know, compiling the PowerShell code at the C-sharp.net binary, and you know, all cool, all worked, but you lacked some sort of visibility. So the process was kind of like you package up the application, you compile it in a .NET binary, you upload it to your Lambda function for execution. And Although that worked, but also came with some challenges. Some of these challenges was the fact that you were not able to view or edit or play around with your code within the Lambda console itself. You didn't have enough visibility over your partial pipeline output. So when it comes from a logging perspective, when it really comes to having a simplified testing and development process, that was a bit of a challenge. And that has been changed with the solution I'm just going to talk about shortly. So I've been talking about Lambda runtimes or Lambda runtimes a few times so far. So what does it really mean? So Lambda supports multiple languages through the use of runtimes. The runtime simply provides a language-specific environment to run that runs in an execution environment. So the runtime here relays invocation events, context messages, and pretty much the responses between the Lambda and the function itself. So you can use runtime, either that Lambda provides, which is the managed runtime, or you can use a custom runtime. The managed runtimes are, as mentioned, it's fully natively supported for you. You really don't have to do anything about it. It's mainly based on Amazon Linux or Amazon Linux 2, which is simply a uh, Linux distribution sponsored and supported by AWS. And for the time being, we do support some uh, programming languages such as .NET, Node.js, Python, Java, Ruby, and Go, and so on. On the other side for custom runtime, you really can bring any Linux distribution and run it on top of Lambda. It can be literally any language, and it can be a shell script, a language script, or even any binary executable you'd like to execute on top of your Lambda function. So it sounds like custom runtime brings some value and advantage that we can utilize in order to run our PowerShell scripts. The first benefit that comes with it is the fact that you can run your PowerShell runtime natively. You don't need to you know, run it on top of another runtime. Uh, Besides that, it can help you to uh, view, edit, and play around with your code in the AWS Management Console. And last but not least, enabling you to have an easy way to share your code and modules across the different functions 
without having to include it or incorporate it as part of every single partial script you're going to have. So uh, the first one, which is about the native partial runtime, the new custom runtime for PowerShell, as mentioned, uses native partial uh, instead of compiling the PowerShell and hosting it on the .NET runtime. Using native PowerShell custom runtime actually matches the standard PowerShell session, which enhances the, the performance part while also simplifies the development and testing process for your PowerShell scripts. This custom runtime returns pretty much every single place on the pipeline itself as a function output. So on the previous solution, you only got the output of the, uh, the last output of your PowerShell pipeline. It's a bit different with this solution. Now you have the full visibility for the login part, for the, the write dash output commandlet, and so on. This enables you to uh, get this kind of decent logging solution, having more visibility of your error messages, and so on. Being able to play around with your PowerShell, PowerShell code in the AWS Management Console was one of the requests also, because the fact that you now can, as you see in the screenshot, be able to see, edit, or even create your PowerShell code or add your PowerShell scripts right away in it was kind of handy. The fact that you are able to test your functions in a non-complicated way via the very same management console was also kind of helpful. And now the fact that it's available in the management console, it's also supported to incorporate or include your partial code as part of your infrastructure as code template. So in case you have a partial or an infrastructure as code tool such as CloudFormation, Terraform, and so on, and you are creating your Lambda function, you can append the PowerShell code as part of the very same template. Of course, if you're a fan of deploying and creating your infrastructure as well as your application in the very same pipeline. Last but not least, being able to share your code across different functions because now you really don't have to go through the complex process of uh, running your PowerShell on top of another runtime. Now you can only have a PowerShell runtime that contains the PowerShell binaries needed in order to execute your PowerShell scripts and commandlets as a custom runtime shared pretty much across all of the functions you're gonna use. Besides that, it's gonna help you to share your modules across the different functions you're having. So if you have your own PowerShell modules, third-party modules, and so on, you can just bring them in and share them across the different function by using Lambda layers, which I'll talk about them later on. So with that, we got to know some of the benefits of the PowerShell custom runtime and what value it actually brings to you. So with that, let's have a demo to see how it really looks like and how I can execute my PowerShell scripts on top of that custom runtime. So I'm gonna navigate to the AWS Management Console and just search for the Lambda service. And over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new Lambda function. Let's call it PS Summit function. And for the runtime, I'm just gonna specify a custom runtime for uh, Amazon Linux 2, and I don't really need to do any uh, other configuration for this one. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna just create an empty Lambda function for you that you can actually, on top of it, build your own partial custom runtime. So once it's created, we now need to add a partial custom runtime. As part of this demo, I'm not really gonna show how you can build a partial custom runtime. Later on I will, but I've just gone ahead and did build it. And what I'm gonna do is, as part of the layers, I'm just gonna add a layer which would include this partial custom runtime. And I can add it either by choosing the layer, the custom layer itself, or by specifying the ARN of it. So let's go by specifying the ARN or the Amazon resource name of this layer, which was already created. So I'm just gonna copy it, paste it over here, verify, and add. So once this partial custom runtime is added, that actually means or this to this function, I can run on top of this lambda function any partial commandlets I would like to have as long as the dependencies it has, such as modules and so on, are already there. So what I'm gonna do is, as part of the custom runtime, just come with some files that are not really needed for our demo, so I'm just gonna delete them. And I'm gonna create a new file, call it examplehandler.ps1. And with this file, I'm just gonna copy this partial function. 
which is simply, you know, a function that uh, has a couple of parameters, which I'll talk about later on, and uh, a variable that has this value, which is hello from lambda with, and this uh, variable that has been specified as a parameter here, then displaying the value stored in this variable. So this lambda input variable is simply one of the variables that are provided as part of the custom runtime, and it includes pretty much anything you are passing to your lambda function when you would like to invoke it. That could be a test event, that could be in case you're integrating it with S3, SNS, um, SQS, and so on, it could be the value coming out of these services. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and for the runtime level, I'm gonna change the handler name to match really what I really would like to execute over here. Um, so the handler, in a nutshell, is a way for you that specifies what you really would like to execute as part of your Lambda function. So if you have tons of functions within this partial script running on top of Lambda, which one would you like to run? Would you like to run the whole script? Would you like to run a certain function? Or would you like to run a certain function within a certain module? Which I will also touch on a bit uh, later on about that. So in this case, I really would like to run the function we have just added, and that's why I'm gonna pass the name of the script itself, double colons, and I'm gonna add a, a function name which was actually called handler. I'm just also gonna go ahead and give it a bit more configuration so it will run quite fast for the sequence of time, and a bit of more timeout, then save. And now I think I'm actually ready to just go ahead and deploy my partial code to run on top of AWS partial custom runtime. So I'm just gonna deploy it, and once it's deployed, we'll just apply this code to the function. And what I'm gonna do afterwards is, I really would like to test if this code is working properly or not. That's why I'm just gonna go ahead and click on test to create a new test event, which is called BS Summit Test. And this is the input we are passing here. This is just, you know, a JSON event, which include these keys. Uh, but just for the sake of testing the functionality, if the lambda input variable would be able to retrieve these uh, values when we execute the partial script or not. So now I'm just, after creating this test event, I'm just gonna, you know, it's only one, so I'm just gonna test it. And now I should be able to see, once it's executed, the response value, which was actually hello from lambda with, and then the lambda input variable values. So, so far, it sounds to be working quite well, actually, when it really comes to utilizing partial runtime to run partial commandlets on top of it without any complications. What if I really would like to take it farther and do something with AWS as a platform, for which I'm gonna need the AWS tools for partial, which means I need to create another layer that would have these tools incorporated and installed as part of it. So, again, later on, I will just go ahead, go, go into that part of how we can create layers, but it has been already created, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna navigate to layers again, add another layer, and in this case, we can use it by custom layers instead of specifying the ARN, which is called demo AWS tools layer. Then I can select the version and add it. So this layer includes the binaries needed for me in order to be able to import the AWS tools for partial modules and be able to use it to execute or run uh, partial command list for AWS services and resources. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring in a new function, which actually, this one. And what this function is simply doing is, it's actually retrieving the get, uh, it's, it's getting all of the AWS regions that we do support at this stage. Of course, if you, if you have a look over here, it's importing the module needed for it, which would be coming from out of the layer we just added for AWS tools for partial. And you know, uh, later on we'll talk about how the execution looks like from a handler perspective when it really comes to importing all of these modules. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna deploy my changes and afterwards I'm gonna test out. As part of the testing, I really should be able to see now, if I tested it, that it's able to retrieve pretty much all of the AWS region by using this partial commandlet, um, which is actually pretty much the response we're getting here. So these are all of the AWS region. You can use your imagination to really 
use AWS command lists or PowerShell command lists to do whatever you'd like with, uh, with that or extend the script further. Of course, as long as you're importing the right module. So that was it, how we, easy it is now to really play around with uh, PowerShell custom runtime on top of Lambda. So now what should I do in order to build that solution? What should I do in order to build the custom runtime and the layers I do need? So in order to deploy a partial custom runtime, all you need is to make sure that you have you are building the partial custom runtime layers, which I'll show you how. And optionally, you can bring any Lambda layers you on top of that that you would like or potentially would be interested to use, which could be an AWS tools partial layer, could be your own private modules, could be third party modules. So feel free as long as you're not hitting the limit of the Lambda layers, which I'll touch on uh, on the next slide. Lambda layers limit is simply five layers, so at least at the stage of recording. So make sure that you're not exceeding that uh, uh, until we furtherly uh, introduce extra support. And of course, once you're done with a particular layer, feel free to build your own partial scripts on top of the Lambda function itself. So I've been talking about Lambda layers so far, so what does it really provide and what does it really mean? So Lambda layers simply provide a convenient way to package libraries and other dependencies that you can use with your Lambda functions. By using the Lambda layers, you're actually not only reducing the size of your uploaded deployment archives, but you're also making it faster to deploy and uh, implement your code. And the layer itself is actually a zip file archive that could contain additional code and data, which could be a custom runtime, as we have seen, could be libraries, could be dependencies, could be uh, anything you might potentially need uh, for your custom runtime uh, to, to use as part of your Lambda execution. By using layers, you're actually promoting for code, uh, code sharing because now you really don't have to invest a lot of time and effort in utilizing or incorporating other people's code as part of your code. You can just have it or utilize it as a layer, which you can just import later on. And you can uh, that would promote for sharing uh, or separating the, the responsibilities, which would mainly help you to focus more on writing your own business logic other than focusing on other things. As you see over here, this is the runtime environment. On top of it, we are having our own layers and the function code. Just make sure that you're not exceeding the limits of, uh, of the number of layers. So in order to deploy the PowerShell uh, custom runtime Lambda function, you need to build the layers and the function itself. And you can do so in multiple ways, either by using Linux or Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, by using Windows PowerShell, by using uh, AWS uh, uh, serverless application model, which is actually a serverless, uh, an AWS serverless framework that's mainly meant to help you build serverless applications on top of AWS. And uh, you can actually, by using the very same tools such as AWS SAM, would be able to test your function locally without having to deploy it to the cloud. Generally speaking, when we really talk about serverless application, especially uh, with SAM, it's not only the Lambda itself, it's really more about a decent serverless stack that includes event triggers, that includes database connections and so on. But for the sake of the demo we're gonna see today, it would be actually just a Lambda function and that's it. So with that, let's have a look about how we can build our cost, partial custom runtime. So pretty much the code I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna share with you the repo that includes it, which is uh, the, the repo we have open sourced that contains the partial custom runtime that you can use. As part of this repo, it actually does have a template uh, YAML file, which is a SAM template that's gonna deploy the custom runtime and a Lambda function uh, that uses this custom runtime as a layer and another custom run, uh, and another layer, which is the AWS tools for partial, which is pretty much the demo we have seen earlier. However, if you're not interested into using SAM or you're having your own Windows desktop and not interested to run on top of it, or not interested to run this or build it on top of containers, you can actually use the partial script that exists also as part of this uh, GitHub repo, which would simply, you know, this partial script that would help you to build your own layer for partial custom runtime. So getting back to the template, it's pretty basic actually. It just, yeah, it's straight in cloud formation. Uh, so it's actually, you know, uh, creating a partial, uh, uh, a Lambda function with two layers, which are these layers that would be created uh, over here. So the first one is a partial runtime layer where we are specifying the content URI needed, what would be the compatible runtimes for it, 
and the build method we're going to use, which is actually Makefile. Uh, we're not making, we're not using Makefile because we are necessarily loving Makefile, but because Sam supports only Makefiles. So if it was for me and it does support PowerShell, I would have been more than happy. And the same applies for the other layer, actually, for uh, for the AWS tools for PowerShell. So this Makefile is actually very basic, very simple. Uh, it's simply, you know, we are creating a couple of variables here for the partial version, the architecture. And what we are doing afterwards is simply that downloading and extracting the partial binaries. Uh, and afterwards, we are removing the, the, uh, the, uh, the zip or uh, the archive version of the partial binary. And then we're making the, the extraction uh, of the partial binary uh, as executable. Then we are copying any additional data that we might need, such as the runtime files, uh, the bootstrap files, and, and so on. And uh, slightly shortly afterwards, I will just be talking about the bootstrap file and what kind of content that it does has. Then we are just gonna merge pr pretty much all of the private module content we are having into single piece on file to speed it up. And last but not least, we're gonna make the bootstrap file or the bootstrap script file executable. That's pretty much what does the make file has. Very basic, very straightforward. When it really comes to the bootstrap file, the very first line you see here is, it's actually opening PowerShell with no profile associated. It's, it's, it's PowerShell from moment zero when it starts the bootstrapping process. Um, and for the sake of the time, we're not really gonna go through every single line of code, but simply it starts you know, by initiating the custom runtime, then setting the PowerShell version environment, importing the runtime modules, all the way to initiating the function, you know, and that continues to be the same process until the cleanup part for removing what we really don't need. So that's actually the process in a nutshell for how we do create a layer, for how we do create a runtime, or actually the files we need for. Um, in this case, you're just gonna use these files which are open sources in GitHub and I will share with you uh, the URL later on. But once you download them, what do I really need to do in order to build the PowerShell custom runtime, in order to build my layer for AWS tools for PowerShell? So once you're done with that, all you need to do first is to start building it. And for that, I can actually use Sam build in order to you know, uh, build this uh, template. And I'm gonna use a cache version for the sake of the time. And what's gonna do is it's really gonna just go ahead and build uh, the code we are having over here. I can, as mentioned earlier, test this code locally of the Lambda function that would be deployed as part of the function that the same file or same template would deploy, which actually includes pretty much the same code we used to get the AWS regions. So if I go ahead now and I just did same local invoke, what's gonna do is it's gonna build a container on top of Docker that runs on top of my laptop. And within this container image, it's gonna just invoke the API of the Lambda to test the code we have or the partial code we have on it in order to make sure that we are getting the result we are expecting, which is actually pretty much this JSON output we are getting for uh, pretty much all of the regions we have uh, on AWS. So, so far it sounds good, sounds to be working fairly fine. If you'd like to go ahead and provision the whole SAM template, you can just go ahead and do SAM deploy. If you'd like to have a guided version, you can use the flag G. But for the sake of the time, I have gone ahead and deployed it already. Once you're having it deployed, you can actually test or invoke your Lambda function API to make sure it's also after being deployed uh, working pretty much fine. And with that you can use, or use AWS CLI or PowerShell if you have PowerShell, AWS tools for PowerShell installed on, top, on your local laptop. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this uh, CLI command, which is, you know, simply uh, is gonna invoke a Lambda function where I'm specifying the Lambda function name and the region, and then I'm storing pretty much the output of this invocation in this uh, variable called invoke dash result. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pin this command and I'm just gonna cat what's inside this uh, variable that we are storing the result in, which should be pretty much the same result we get as part of our SAM local invoke where we tested the function locally. You still can do it with PowerShell for sure if you're having PowerShell, AWS tools for PowerShell installed on your local laptop, where as you see here, I'm just having a PowerShell variable called response and within it I'm running the invoke-lm function commandlet 
specifying the function name, and then I can actually append this method, which would display what we are really storing within this variable in which the JSON data would be stored, which should be pretty much the very same output we got earlier. So that's actually how it, it works. That's how you can test it locally. That's how you can deploy the runtime. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And once you deploy it, you should be able to see, or once you build your own partial, uh, sorry, your own Lambda layers, you should be able to see them over here, which is the two layers we actually utilized earlier on. And as part of the same template, which you really don't necessarily have to follow, it's gonna actually build uh, another Lambda function that would be utilizing uh, the, the, the layers we just created and use a partial code used earlier on the second example of the first demo that would retrieve the AWS region. So yeah, that's actually pretty much it in a nutshell in terms of how easy it is to build your PowerShell custom runtime on Lambda, on playing around with it, on using or bringing your own PowerShell scripts. No complexities, uh, no extra effort needed when it really comes to uh, building or compiling it on top of a .NET runtime and so on. So we have been talking about handlers earlier on and there are different ways that uh, the Lambda would support the handlers partial over here. So if you're not familiar with handlers, it's simply you know, the method in your function code that processes events. Uh, when your function is invoked, Lambda runs the handler, that you, the handler method you specify. So what we did was we specified the script name, colon, colon, the handler, the function name, this is what's gonna be executed. Or we can actually just specify the script itself, or we gonna, uh, or, or we can potentially run a certain function within a certain module and so on. So these are mainly the three ways. The first one for specifying the whole script, it's just gonna pretty much go through the whole script and execute it. No certain functions to be specified. And the partial script itself in this case would have to be the handler and there would be no initialization process happening outside of the script because you are, in, uh, you are executing pretty much everything. Which is a bit different when you really execute a certain function within the script. So what happened in this case is it's just gonna go ahead and dot source the specified script itself. And from there, it's gonna do any initialization for any dependencies such as loading modules. So if you do remember the second example, we had this importing module for the AWS tools that we're gonna need in order to execute the git-aws region. This would be done as part of the initialization process you do need. And of course, if you do have any secrets that your partial scripts would be retrieving from a secrets management solution, it's gonna be pretty much the same case as well. And then after doing the initialization, it's just go, gonna go ahead and execute your function. And in case you do have any subsequent invocations for pretty much the very same runtime environment, no initialization would be done because it has been already done once. So it's just gonna invoke the function right away. With the module itself, it's a bit different because instead of focusing on the whole script, you're just focusing on a function within a certain module. So uh, it's just gonna import the specified module initially and then run the initialization process as happened uh, in, in the previous example. And pretty much everything that would happen when it really comes to the function invocation would be pretty much the same as the previous example. One more thing we talked about was that PowerShell custom runtime comes with two variables. One is the lambda input, the other one is the lambda context. The lambda input, as you have seen in the very first example, it just displays or gets pretty much what you're passing to your lambda function, which could be passed from uh, a test event that we did ourselves, like the JSON data we passed, or it could be coming from S3, it could be coming from SQS, SNS, or any other service that would invoke your lambda function. On the other side, we have the lambda context, which is simply an object that would give you or provide you with methods and some properties about the function itself. This could be uh, the function name, this could be uh, the remaining time, this could be the consumed resources, and so on. One more thing I would like to highlight, which I mentioned a bit earlier on, was the fact that distribution now gives you pretty much everything placed on the pipeline. You don't get only the last output of the partial pipeline. That also includes write-output commandlet and pretty much other write commandlets that you'd like to have. This would give you a great visibility when it really comes to the logging part. And speaking of logging, so by default, Lambda would stream the logs to Amazon CloudWatch. 
and it just needs to have permissions or IAM permissions in order to be able to push these logs to CloudWatch. It's going to push the logs to an Amazon CloudWatch log stream, which is simply uh, a sequence of uh, logs coming from pretty much the same source and stored on a bigger thing called the Amazon CloudWatch log group. And any kind of error messages, any kind of outputs coming from right host, uh, right variables, right information, so on and so forth, would be also logged and stored in your CloudWatch log streams. Um, Lambda would automatically also monitor your Lambda function metrics. So uh, pretty much the normal infrastructure metrics would be visible and you can monitor them in your Cloud uh, uh, Watch metrics section. Last but not least, uh, error handling. And error handling can happen on two layers. The first is the function itself. So you can make sure that you are appending some uh, error handling code as part of your function in order to throw a certain error uh, in case uh, something happened. And it can happen on the runtime level as well, where you know the function would be terminated, potentially because it ran out of time, or because it detected the syntax error, or because it failed to marshal the uh, response object into JSON, which can actually happen because maybe your uh, encoding base64 uh, is not correctly uh, reacting, or um, could be uh, that your, your uh, mapping JSON types to, um, to the partial data types and primitives is not really mapping properly. Uh, as mentioned earlier, your errors would be written to uh, CloudWatch logs, and of course, any synchronous invocations that would be returned in the output would be stored over there as well. So with that, I really would like to recap about what we have just covered. This is an easy way to run your PowerShell custom runtime, PowerShell on top of Lambda. You really don't have to compile it as part of a .NET runtime. You don't have to struggle with it. You don't have to uh, struggle with testing the function locally. As you have seen, it's pretty easy to do it with Sam, for example. I just tested it locally before even deploying it to the cloud. Um, now we have native PowerShell custom runtime support. You can play around with your code in the console. You can even test it from within the console itself can bring your own custom modules, add them as a layers. You don't have to incorporate or add them as part of your PowerShell script, which would result in extra time to process and execute your code. Of course, extra money. Not so much, but still counts. And eventually, you're going to have a simpler way to build and deploy and test your uh, PowerShell scripts on top of Lambda. More importantly, you're going to be able to utilize Lambda functions to build even driven architectures. And it really doesn't matter if it's on AWS, or if it's in your on-premises environment, as long as it does has enough network connectivity to reach out, you can work around with it. I promised you earlier on that I'm gonna share with you the GitHub repo. Please scan the QR code, which has a AWS plug that talks about distribution, which also includes the GitHub repo on which we have open source distribution. With that, I really would like to wrap it up over here, and I would be more than happy to hear any of your questions. I can go back if you'd like, yeah? Any questions? Right. So when it, each call to it, does it create a separate runtime? Or are they running currently? So when it comes to creating the layers itself, it's, it's going to create a separate runtime. So it's, it's a very. It, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I call the function. Uh, when you invoke the function itself. So uh, what we are doing by adding the Lambda layers is it's going to be as part of the initialization process or the cold start of your Lambda function itself. So the runtime would be already there. When you invoke your Lambda function, once the function is ready, it's not going to be part of your code execution. This would be already there for you. So it's not like you're creating a dedicated runtime. It's not like you're still uh, creating a new layer for it and so on, or you don't actually by any means need to create a dedicated layer for it. You mean in order to retrieve secrets to your function itself? So it really depends where you're storing and hosting your secrets. So for example, we do have the AWS Secrets Manager, which is another service that I personally use, or pretty much most of my customers are using when it really comes to secrets management. So what happens is you're actually hosting your secret over there. You're granting your Lambda function the permissions needed in order to retrieve these uh, permissions, and it's actually getting retrieved at the runtime. So first off, it's not hard to code it. Secondly, it's a faster way to retrieve your secrets and could be rotated as well if, if needed. Well, then thank you so much for joining my session today. Again, my name is Mohamed Wali, and I have been more than happy to have you in my session today. Thank you so much.